Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, a Sanmai Damascus hunting knife. So, today, a lesson in being a custom knife maker wrapped inside a lesson about how to make a particular knife. So, I'm going to be making, as I said, a Sanmai Damascus um, hunting knife, which is a pretty fancy little hunting knife. Um, but in a funny sort of way, this story is going to morph into a little bit of sort of autobiographical experience about what it's really like to be a custom knife maker. Uh, but you'll have to get all the way through the video to really get the full impact of that story. So anyway, this is an interesting blade because it's sort of a meeting point between my Japanese blades on the one hand and my modern fixed blades on the other. Um, now, in Japanese sword nomenclature, sanmai uh, means that a blade's composed of three layers of steel, generally sort of a softer outer layer, uh, which is kind of like the bread in a bologna sandwich, and then the bologna in the middle is the hardest sort of steel. Now, in this particular blade, I'm going to be making a Damascus outer part, that's the sort of the bread in the sandwich, and then the bologna in the sandwich is going to be a W2 mono steel, uh, which is um, a steel that is a big favorite of mine and will make for a really nice, sharp cutting edge. I'll start by making the exterior skin steel, the bread of the sandwich, so to speak, by forge welding two steels together. I've cut my 1095 and 1050 steel bars up, grinding off all the mill scale which is normally found on commercial steel stock. This is a fairly laborious process, but a necessary one. The cleaner the steel, the more successful your welds will be. Mill scale is not capable of being welded. so. If you have scale in there, it's going to mess up your weld. And it only takes one small flaw to really screw up a Damascus steel weld. So I'm very meticulous at this stage. Once the steel's cleaned up, it's layered and tack welded together. Then a handle is added. These are tack welds intended to be as minimal as possible. Just the barest amount required to keep the billet from falling apart in the forge. All of the weld material will later be ground off. The steel is then inserted in the forge and brought up to a temperature of around 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. The steel is not melting at this point, but it's pretty close. Once the steel bar reaches a near white hot temperature, it's rapidly transferred to the hydraulic forge press and gently squashed, as gently as a 24 ton press can squash anything anyway, just enough to set the welds. In the space of a heartbeat, the billet goes from being a pile of separate hunks of steel into one solid mass, if you do everything right. By the way, if you're interested in finding out more about the forge welding process, I've got several videos on the subject that you can check out here. At any rate, I'll now draw out the billet on the press. When it reaches suitable length, I take it out of the fire, cool it, and the surface is ground dead clean with every speck of scale removed. Then it's cut apart, restacked, and re-welded. After welding, it's drawn out again, then cooled. Again, all tack weld material is ground out with every surface carefully inspected to assure that the forge welds are 100% perfect. This process may be repeated or not, depending on the intended layer count. In this case, we're aiming for a little over 100 layers in the billet. Because the final knife will be composed of three different layers, this effectively makes the layer count run about 300 layers which equates to maybe a couple thousand layers per inch of thickness. 
Now the billet is cut into appropriate sized pieces for the next stage of the process, cleaned, and the Sanmai sandwich is constructed with the Damascus pieces placed around the bar of homogeneous W2 steel. Again, sacrificial tack welds, then into the fire. After this billet's forge welded, the bar is drawn out yet again. This ugly bar of steel now needs to be reduced to a nice clean flat bar suitable for making a knife. At this point, depending on how you do the math, we're about two days of very hot, difficult, dirty, uncompromising work into the project. One mistake anywhere in the process could result in an unacceptable knife. Any problems at all and a couple days work goes down the crapper and you start from scratch. We're not going to forge the final product, we're actually going to grind it. If you've been watching my channel lately, you've heard me mention Patreon. Well, it's a cool way for you to partner with this channel and get some benefits beyond just watching the videos. Plus, you get that warm feeling you have when you stand up for the things you value. Click the link to Patreon, then let's get back to it. So there are a number of ways of flattening our steel bar, including using a belt grinder, a surface grinder, or a mill. Now each has advantages and disadvantages, but in this case I'll use the mill. I'm running a fly cutter with carbide inserts to true up the surface of the billet. Once again, it's a fairly time consuming process no matter how you do it. Here's the result. So after several days of work, less than 75% of the original material has survived with the rest ground off, milled away, or scaled or fluxed away. Only after all of this work can conventional knife making begin. So I'll begin by drilling holes on my mill. These holes will be used for the pins that hold the handle scales onto the tang. I drill them now because the square shape of the bar makes it easier to clamp in the vise than it will be at later stages in the project. By positioning them at specified distances down to the thousandth of an inch, I can assure myself that the holes on the handle are perfectly situated. Next, I move on to profiling the exterior shape of the blade on the grinder. So at long last, we're actually starting to see the outlines of a knife. Then I'll grind the bevels. After moving through a sequence of different grits on the belt, the bevels have been brought to around 15 thousandths of an inch at the edge. This will be refined slightly after the blade has been hardened, leaving an even thinner edge. So the next step is going to be heat treating where we harden the steel. We're going to save that for the second video. Click here for the second video.